Okay guys, so in the last video, we pushed our Django project onto Heroku, and in this video, what we wanna do is connect it to a Postgres database on a live server. So we're first gonna use the Postgres database that we get with Heroku, and then in the second part, we're actually gonna configure this to a Postgres database that we have on AWS. So when you launch your Django project onto Heroku, depending on how you set things up, you would have gotten a Postgres database in your Heroku app already. So if you go to your project, uh, just to double check this, open up your app that you created in Heroku and go to settings and open up reveal config vars. These are your configuration variables. And if you have this, it means you're already set up with a default one. If you're not, you could run this from the command prompt and create one, or you could just go to resources and create another one. So I can actually add a second database just by doing a search. So I'm just going to look up Postgres and we already have one here, but I'm going to create another one and we're just going to stick with a hobby dev Postgres. So it's going to be a free version and I'll just show you what happens here. So when we add it, we're going to be able to see our database right away and it set us up with a database, but with a different name now. And if we open it up, you're going to see we have nothing here. Um, it's just going to be an empty database with empty columns and we can now see this if we go back to our settings and we can see the second database with another name. So let's go ahead and actually configure our Django project to this database and go ahead and run a migration so we can see our app. So right now I'm still on SQLite. I actually did push SQLite to Heroku, but we wanna change that. So let's go ahead and within our databases here, just underneath what we're gonna do is import a library that's gonna help us uh, change that database URL to what we have on Heroku. So the dependency we're gonna work with is gonna be this DJ database URL. And what it's gonna do in short is basically allow us to set up configuration in our settings.py file that whenever we push this project, it's gonna look for this database URL and allows us to look for Heroku's environment variables. So it just uh, it's a little shortcut to make things easier instead of having to do this manually. So let's go ahead and just run the pip install. So I'll actually just grab this from here and just run that pip install and we'll have to make sure to add that to our requirements.txt file. So I already have this, it's gonna let me know that. So go ahead and let that download and let's just do pip freeze and we'll do requirements and I already have this file so it's just gonna add it. Requirements.txt. Okay, so let's go ahead and make sure that was added. So there we go, database URL and in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and paste in the configuration. So um, I'll just go over each line here. So just under databases, we have our SQLite database and I'm leaving it like that for now. Um, we're gonna import that new pip install and we're gonna set the environment variable of db underscore from env. And this is just how the documentation tells us to set it up. And we set that default database to this new variable. So if I save this and if we just go ahead and throw it up into our project. So let's make sure we're in the right project. Get remote dash V. Okay, so we can just add it. So we'll just do git add, and then I'll just do git commit, and we'll just make the note, add a database connection. I'll just say database con, and let's push that. So git push. Heroku master. Okay, so once we push that, what's gonna happen here is we have that new database. So I turned off debug so we can see what's going on, but we're gonna get an error right away because we don't have any of those tables. We never migrated it. So I'm gonna show you how to migrate directly from here uh, with an extra command that Heroku allows us to run directly from our Heroku CLI. So I'll in a second, once that uploads, we'll go ahead and show you that. Okay, so now that it's live, let's go ahead and check out our project. So if we go to the admin panel, we should see an error the second we try to log in. So I'll just type in a user that we may wanna try out here. Okay, so right away, we don't have a user and I turned off debug so we can see this. Uh, what's happening here is that we don't have any of the tables because we haven't migrated. It's just a fresh database. So if I actually go into resources, and I look at the database, this is the one we're working with. So if you look here, there's no rows and no tables. So the database has not been migrated. 
And by the way, if you look into settings and you want to see the database password, uh, name and, and all that stuff, um, you can just go into settings and then credentials and here's your port number, your password. So that's the default stuff Heroku gave us. So let's go ahead and migrate this. So we can actually run Heroku, run python manage.py migrate. So this is actually going to migrate our database that we have on Heroku. So you'll actually see the tables be added and then we'll just move on to uh, the AWS one. So let's give it a second. And if I go into the table now and refresh this, there we go. So we have 75 rows, 15 tables, and we can actually start running commands like create super user by doing stuff like this. So Heroku run and then Python manage.py create super user. We're not going to do that right now, but we can start directly running these commands from here. So let's go ahead and actually uh, delete these databases and connect to the AWS one. So if you're going, if you're using that method, what we're going to do is actually delete these. So I can remove this one because um, actually I can't remove it directly. So I'm going to have to go into resources and just delete the two databases. So Okay, so let's delete the second one. So now if I go into settings, we no longer have any configuration variables for our database. So let's go ahead and actually connect it to this database we have on AWS. So here's my database. I have the endpoint and I'll just go over that configuration. So when we create the new database, we're gonna set a database URL manually. So database underscore URL. And that's what that connection is going to look for now in settings.py. And we're going to manually set this. So the value, um, I don't know if you noticed it before, but it looked something like this right here. So if I open up this picture, uh, we had this Postgres. So it specified the database type, a username, password, this at symbol with a URL endpoint, port number, and database name. So this is what we need to actually connect to our AWS database. So I went ahead and made that in this Word doc, and we're gonna paste this and then manually drag in or add in each item. So it's a Postgres database. My username to my database is Dennis, so we'll add that. The password, I just have a password I made up here, so I'll delete this database after. M8E5RJCN, one exclamation point, two, three, four, and that URL endpoint. So the endpoint needs to be uh, from our AWS database. So we're going to throw in that endpoint. So from the at symbol all the way to, if I can, hopefully uh, for some reason I can't see. So from the at symbol to that colon right there is where we put in our database endpoint. And then the port number is whatever we have here. So 5432. And uh, if you're at this point, um, if, you, if this isn't familiar to you, go ahead and watch my Django, uh, Django Postgres database video in this crash course. So 5432. Um, I go over, over all of this and we create the database. So that's what I'm working off of right now. So the database name now is just whatever I called it. So I named mine CRM underscore live. So again, I followed this method right here. Set the username, password, endpoint, port, and database name. So this is a lot like what we actually had up here in this configuration. In fact, um, it's exactly the same. So that's just how we set our environment variable in Heroku. So we'll go ahead and add that. And now we should be pointing to that database. So if I refresh this, and from our admin panel, if we try to log in now, we're gonna get an error because we, uh, we didn't add one more step and I purposely left this out. So What's gonna happen here is we're gonna to try to connect to this database, but we are gonna get a timeout error because right now we're trying to make this connection, but in AWS, what we need to do is allow uh, certain IP addresses to actually connect to our database. So let's go ahead and give this a second. And once it times out, I'll show you the error we're gonna get and we'll fix it. So we got this error. And what this means here is if you go down to your database in security groups or security group roles, we have our inbound connection that we need to set. So right now we're only allowing it from a certain IP address and 
what I'm going to do is actually uh, set more lenient parameters to where we allow any inbound method to come in. So if we go to edit and for inbound connection, we're going to set this to anywhere. So that basically means whoever tries to connect, as long as they have connections, go ahead and let them connect. And if you didn't see that, go ahead and go to inbound and go ahead and add new rule, find Postgres if that's the database you're using and then set it to anywhere. So it's gonna go back to custom, but as long as it's zero, zero and, and that's set, so we save that. So now if I refresh from the admin panel, we should see it. So I can log in. So I wanna show you one last thing. So we have our password here and I created this database and just threw in one user. So in here, we're gonna see a single user, but if I'm on my local database or my local machine here and run the server, so if I log in locally, let's go ahead and just set that up here on localhost support 8000. If we go to the admin panel, we're actually gonna see all of the data from the SQLite database. So. On local, we have the SQLite database. Live, we have our Postgres database. So that's because of this DJ database URL allowing us to connect to that. So that's all we have for this video. Um, again, that's all in the configuration variables. This is where we're able to set that. I'll make sure to link up that image and uh, or I'll try to link it up and I'll also link up the source code. So um, in the next video, what we're gonna do is actually show you how to connect uh, um, a custom domain name to a Django app on Heroku. So right now we have CRM live Heroku app. We want to change this to something that um, we actually want to host on. So I don't know if I'll make it part of this project, but I'll just show you how to make that connection because it should be pretty easy.